Well, hello, Mr. Riker here, talking about the 2012 AP exam. And question number two about spinners. Ooh, boy, charity fundraiser, baby. Spin the pointer game, not spin the bottle. Spin the pointer game. So we got a equally sliced pie here, it looks like. Donation of $2 is required to play the game for each $2 donation. Player spins once, receives the amount of money indicated, equal probability of landing in 10 sectors. So we got question A, find the um, find x, x is $2, $1, negative $8, complete the table for the probability distribution. So we have x is the amount that the, um, the net contribution to the charity that a person makes when they play the game once. So if it costs $2 to play and the charity is making $2 on you, that means you lost. That means you hit one of these zeros here. So since these are equally uh, equal regions, equal probability, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got six out of ten. Um, if the contribution to the charity is one dollar, that means you paid two bucks, you must have won a buck, and then the charity keeps a buck. So that would mean you must have hit one of these guys. There's three out of ten. And then lastly, if the charity is losing eight dollars, that must mean you paid two bucks and the charity had to pay you back ten bucks. So that's negative eight that the charity is given up. And there's only one way, one out of ten. Um, very important note here, when you have probability distributions like this, um, these probabilities should add up to one, right? These are all the possible cases. So six tenths plus three tenths plus one tenth is ten tenths. So that's 100%. And then question B says, what's the expected value? Well, uh, we had this was 60%, this was 30, this was 10. Um, the expected value, there's a formula on the formula sheet that looks like this. The expected value of a random discrete variable is the sum of x times the probability of x. And that's what we have here. So we would be multiplying uh, those two. We've been multiplying these two. We'd be multiplying these two. And then we add them together. So um, that would be the mean is... Uh, 2 times 0 0.6 plus 1 times 0 0.3 plus 0 times 0 0.1. Add those together. Uh, let's see, we got 1.2 plus 0.3. I think that's 1.5 if I added correctly. So that means the net contribution for the charity uh, uh, on average, they're making a dollar fifty per play of the game. Um, that doesn't mean that they will make exactly one fifty on one play. That's an average in a very large set of games. They're going to average out one dollar and fifty cents per play. Um, so that was A and B for this question. And then moving on to the next part. Oops, made a mistake there. So let me start over. We have the mean of one, uh, let's see, sorry, two dollars. There is 60% chance of getting a net of two dollars. Uh, one dollar, there is a 30% chance. And then losing eight dollars, there's a 10% chance. Uh, calculating those, that would be 1.2 plus 0 0.3 minus 80 cents. So that looks like it's 70. So the mean is 70 cents. So what that means is that the charity expects to make 70 cents per game that's played. Now none of these options are actually 70 cents. Um, this 70 cents is in a very large set of games. They expect to make 70 cents per game. So if they had like a thousand games and their average is 70 cents per game, then they can expect to make, what is that, 700 bucks? They can expect to make, on average, 
Um, so that's what expected value is getting at. Not that you had to interpret it here, but just so you understand what expected value is. In a very large set of games, they expect to make 70 cents per game on average. All right, let's look at part C. The charity would like to receive a net contribution of $500 from this game. What's the fewest number of times the game must be played for the expected value for the net contribution to be at least $500? So we just said that on average they're making $0.70 cents per game. Now if they're making $0.70 cents per game the question is how many games, we'll use n for the number of games, would it take to get at least $500? So uh, just a little algebra, if we divide both sides, we get 500 divided by 0.7. And then we can calculate that. 500 divided by 0.7 is 500 divided by 0.7 and we get 714.3. Uh, um, so they would need 715 games. Can't have a third of a game. They need 715 games to be able to get at least $500. So there's part C, and then lastly, part D. Okay, so a little paragraph to read here. Based on last year's event, the charity anticipates the spin the pointer game will be played a thousand times. Charity would like to know the probability of getting at least $500 in a thousand plays. The mean and standard deviation in a thousand plays is 700. That makes sense, 70 cents times a thousand. And then 92.79, I'm guessing that probably comes from this formula, standard deviation of the amount is 1,000 games times uh, 70, oh, maybe, well, So we have a thousand times at least five hundred dollars. The mean is seven hundred, and the standard deviation is ninety-two point seven nine. Use a normal distribution to approximate the probability that we get at least five hundred dollars in a thousand plays. So uh, you're told that we can use a normal distribution, and you're told the mean is seven hundred, and you're told that the standard deviation is ninety-two point seven nine. And you'd like to know the probability that we get at least 500. 500 looks like it's going to be about two standard deviations away. And you want at least 500, probability that the um, uh, x, the net contribution, is greater than 500. Uh, that's greater, so at least would be shaded on this side. So we're going to get a very large chance. Um, so that's the same as asking what's the probability the z-score is greater than our boundary is 500, our mean is 700, and our standard deviation is 92.79. Uh, and then calculating that, we'd use normal CDF, normal CDF, lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. Um, the lower bound would be 500, the upper bound is infinite, the mean is 700, and the standard deviation is 92.79. Um, checking that out on the calculator, we would get uh, second VARS, normal CDFs number two. The lower bound is 500. The upper bound is infinite. The mean was 700, we're told that. And the standard deviation, if I remember, is 92.79. And just double check, 92.79, yeah. Uh, and then enter, paste that in there. So we get 0 0.984 is the probability they make at least $500. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day. See you next time.